Hi everyone, this is Ella Carlson again. This is part two of troubleshooting your competition images. Okay, the next image I'm gonna talk about is this image by a maker in Massachusetts. I had the privilege of judging this in the end of February. Beautiful little girl, absolutely gorgeous, but there's kind of a lot going on here as far as the dress, so that's one thing to really talk about. And the other thing, there's a very large technical issue right up here. See that, how it's brighter there right at the edge of her hair than it is either here or in her hair? That's haloing, and that's gonna automatically, almost always, keep you out of the merit area, especially if you got as, as pronounced a halo as that. And they may not be as wide as that, but there's a lot of times you're gonna see haloing between areas of contrast. So just make sure, even right out of the camera, that you zoom in and check that. So I'm gonna get rid of that halo by using the clone tool in darken blend mode, not normal, darken, because I wanna only darken things. I don't wanna lighten anything, I don't wanna cover anything up that's not going to be darker than it originally was. So what I do here, if I clone from here, it's only going to choose the darker pixel to put down, so it won't touch her hair. See, it's not gonna to touch her hair. So I'm going to come in here, resample a fair amount, go around the edge, and that means I'm just option clicking outside here to resample the color that's out there, and voila, the halo is gone. That's pretty much it. I've got a little bit of blob there, so I'm just going to use the regular clone tool there. So up here, and just stay away from the hair, okay? So that's the first issue solved fairly easily. Um, the next issue is whenever judges see something that they automatically know is a filter, they're gonna be off put by it a little bit because it's kind of push a button, get a result thing. Um, and we don't really want that. We wanna see that you actually, that we're not seeing the transparent um, process of what you did. It's nice to have a little mystery, in other words. So I'm looking at this eyebrow and going, that is quintessential oil paint filter right there, okay? That's what the oil paint filter will do to an eyebrow. So I know that's what happened. Plus, we're getting all these kind of striations in her skin that are not very flattering to this little girl. So uh, if you're going to paint, let's go paint. Let's really do this. Um, the other thing I'm seeing, there's a little bump here on her neck, and I would kind of straighten that out. We've got a little bump here on her shoulder that doesn't really look like the way the dress would be. So again, earlier I talked about the pen tool. We can use that to, to straighten that out. But again, I'm going to use the mixer brush. You get the sense I use it a lot. I kind of do. So I'm in, a, I'm in a layer above the layer below, so I can just come in and kind of come in and smooth that out. And that eyebrow, I actually would repaint that, and I'll show you how in a minute. But just smooth out her skin, because there we go. And see how, what a difference that's going to make with this beautiful little girl? Okay, so that would be the first. I'd go through there and do, and do that. I'd also come in here and see how it gets really, really light around her ear. I think I'd go in and I'd probably select her ear, but come in and change that and I'm just in the regular clone tool at this point, but I would kind of make that correction. A um, couple other things. We have a really, really bright sash down here, and that shouldn't really be the focus of the image. So I would come in here with the, with the um, quick selection tool and select her little belt there and make it much smaller so I can get in that little corner and get this part too, hopefully. Okay, you get, zooming in and making the tool smaller will actually help it become a little more precise. Then I'm gonna get rid of the over, over selection here with Option or Alt key, and then copy all that to a new layer and just change the blend mode to multiply and see how it brings down the brightness of that, and we get the detail back in the gross grain ribbon, and it's really kind of brings it back to where it should be. 
Um, the little bump on her shoulder, I'm going to merge those two layers because we don't need those separate anymore. Again with the Curvature Pen Tool, start and finish, and then just, oops, then just shape it to where you want it. I just missed putting my, my cursor on the line. And you can just pull that line around the way you want it. The sleeves do bump up a bit, but they don't bump up quite in that shape, I don't believe. So, and sometimes it's more, it's not about what is actually there occasionally, it's about the perception of what should be there. So if it looks wrong, just make sure that you are not making the assumption that the judges are gonna know it wasn't wrong. Okay, I'm gonna just tweak that over. Hold down the Option or Alt key to make a corner. Come out here, we don't need to be precise up there. Option or Alt to make another corner. Command return on the Mac, Control, Enter on the PC to turn it into a selection. I'm gonna feather that a tiny bit, maybe a 0.5 feather or one pixel feather, 0.5 is fine. And then clone in the background so that we have a nice little shape to that sleeve right there. That may even be too much of a bump there. So you can you can freehand it if you can to make whoop, to make that bump. See that's a little harder than with the pen tool. There we go. Maybe something more along the lines like that. Um, those sleeves are quite bright, and especially in comparison to her face. So I might take the dodge tool here at a low opacity. I'm at 20% right up here, and kind of just brighten up her face a little bit, just that mask of the face. Be careful you don't go into, oh yeah, sorry. Let me go back a few steps and merge those two layers because they have the, the oil paint filter as a separate layer still. So I'm gonna brighten that mask of her face up just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to do the opposite on those sleeves, just kind of bring those down a bit, okay. And same there. So just kind of, so her face has a little more prominence. Um, so again, we've got the little bit of bump out there. You could do that with Liquify. You could do that with the um, pen tool and just clone in the background to smooth out her neck there where it has a little bit of a bump that may or may not be exactly what you want. I'm just gonna tuck that in a tiny bit there we go. That looks a little bit better. Now the last thing I would do on this image, I mean there's, you could keep going probably, but the last thing would be to crop it differently because if you do that, we don't have this big blob of pink down here. We don't need it. We know this is a little princess. We know that she's very proud of her dress. We don't really have to see the dress. So crop it in and let's see the story up here. Let's see the little girl's face. So this would be what I would suggest, is more like this. And down here, the dress, I, it was already cut apart. So you could kind of maybe use this stuff to fill in if you wanted, but it does kind of bow in there a little bit. Um, but smoothing and skin out makes a big difference. Here we go. So if you see, Oh, let's go from the beginning before I did anything. There we go. So that's that's the difference between her face smoothed out and not smoothed out. Oh, and I did promise eyebrows. Okay, so one of the ways to do eyebrows, oops, undo, is to come in and use the brush and regular brush tool and I'm going to go to one of the bristle brushes that came with Photoshop a few versions ago. You can still get them. Uh, it's it, just go in the brushes and stuff. And then I'm going to come bring it down in size. Whoop. Bring it down in size and sample the color of her eyebrow. We've got a pretty good sample right there. Again, do it on a separate layer so you can see what you're doing. And just dab. Up. We know how to do this, right, ladies? And give the eyebrow some actual, like, shape to it. And if you overspray like that, just switch to your eraser tool because we did it on a separate layer and erase. And that's a much more natural looking eyebrow than that. 
and doesn't scream oil paint filter. So that is exactly what I would do on that image to kind of make it work a bit better. A beautiful model, beautiful little girl, just a lot of stuff going on that took the attention away from that, that lovely little face. Okay, next on the hit parade, um, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna do what I did the other night. I skipped one or two. Um, so I'm gonna go to degree of difficulty. Uh, I think I actually skipped this too, but I'll go here. Um, what I did with this one, this is the way it went into state and it kind of went in as a stacked image, focus stacking. And I did this Christmas cactus and, and kind of curved the wings up. You can see this in the beginning. And it did okay. It did like an 81, 82 kind of thing. So I decided, well, I'm gonna make that more complicated. So I took this, flipped it and mirrored it and added a few things and did this. This is Christmas Goat was the name of this. And it, it did quite well. It, it loaned in a competition. And so sometimes it's a matter of uh, making sure that you give the judges enough to chew on, especially if it's a master artist entry, which this was. It started as this. This is just focus stacking. It's not a high enough degree of difficulty for master artists to really soar. You really have to get in there and show the judges that you've got some uh, legs on you as far as working in, in the, the technical end of things. So I just wanted to touch on that for a minute. Let me go back here bridge and impact huge impact is probably for me is at least one of the most important things to talk about um, I don't need the smoke brush there we go and I pr if you've heard me talk you probably hear me talk about this rose at one point or another um, I was in Florida beautiful garden middle of winter I'm a New Englander so we just if we see a flower in the middle of winter, we go crazy. Uh, so this is a midday flower in horticultural gardens that I couldn't get to any t other time of day. So I shot it and, and my challenge to myself was make a lone image out of this. So I took the rose off the background and when you're, when you're doing flowers and we talked, I think I talked about this at one version of this webinar at least about the flower I talked about earlier. If you're doing flowers, they have to be very impactful because the judges see so many. So this is what I ended up doing, taking it off the background, enhancing any of those little veiny details with burn and dodge tool, using the um, oil paint filter, and then using uh, different layers to make a brightness and darkness difference here. And this was the start of uh, the bouquet book, the bouquet album that I entered in Master Artist. This was one of those images. But the difference between this and this is basically impact. It is the technical difference adds impact to it because this is a rose you don't see every day. This is a rose you would see pretty much anytime anybody could take that snapshot. So. I tell people the reason they became so good at Photoshop is because I wasn't a very good shooter. I have become a better shooter, um, but you know, I still really enjoy being in Photoshop. So, okay, another very, very talented artist here. Um, he sent this one to me for uh, a little bit of feedback. And the thing that occurred to me is first of all, it looks a bit flat. It just appears to be not quite using the full uh, tonal range to the best degree. It, let me just kind of check that out. Oh, I gotta be on the right layer. Yeah, see there's, right up here, there's no real, real bright spots. There's some black stuff in there, but it's kind of looks, appears to be muddy. Oh, it actually may be the border. Let's see. Yeah, see there, it doesn't, it just barely touches the black. So there may be like one little section of black in there that, that's kind of happening. Um, so I think given that we've only got a little candle here for light and we've got the light that's kind of spilling in on the doorway, you have to really think about where that light would hit. And so 
one of the things I suggested to this artist was kind of popping the spots where the light would hit. It would kind of come in here and maybe skim across the top of the steps. Let me make sure, yeah, there. So we could come in here and brighten up the edge of the steps like that. I'm just using the dodge tool, oops. And right up here, again, it would kind of hit those edges, even like the edge of that, that image right there. Right there. That's the light from that doorway that would come in. The rest of this probably would be quite a bit darker. And especially right behind him, where it's relatively far away from the doorway, and he's blocking the light from the candle. So my suggestion was to do something more like that where you have the light coming in, skimming across the steps, defining the edge of these abutments that are on the wall, and then hitting the mask of his face, a little bit on his hood, but really kind of going very dark behind him where it would be very shadowy. It would also, check out the hands, it would very much light up the front of his hands, the hands, the part of the hand that's facing the light, the candle light, and it would light up the, the paper because that's what he's lighting he's using the candle to light the paper. So that would be my suggestion to him is to really think about where that light is coming from and how it would interact with the environment and really take advantage of the drama of that. Okay, next. Okay, oh, my, my favorite area here. Okay, so let's look at these guys. I'm gonna go here. Okay, uh, as a woman of a certain age, I look at this and I actually cringe a little bit. It's a beautiful woman, a beautiful kind of color scheme. His, his, the color harmony of this artist that he's used is gorgeous. It's just beautiful. He's very talented and, and very capable but I don't think he understands how we women feel about our arms. And that to me seems like not a place I wanna go with my arms. So I would smooth out the painting there of those arms so that we're not seeing like striations that kind of look like the creeping you get with age. This woman doesn't look like she's 80 years old. And even if she were 80 years old, she doesn't want her arms to look like that. The other thing, and again, mixer brush, just kind of come in there and smooth that out. Another thing I would do is kind of take the dodge tool and maybe give her hair too much, give her hair a little bit more shine so it doesn't look so dull and kind of dishwatery and just pop that a little bit and do the same with some of the folds in her dress. So she has, she's not flattening out here. Um, it, it's it's a kind of a thing that happens when you paint that it's really easy to flatten an image out and make it look like it's just not as, as poppy, not as contrasty as it should be. Also, just because it's a painting doesn't mean that you want to get into areas like this where you have it getting really, really kind of mushy and down here too. So those things are going to be competition score killers, all that. So here's my suggestion. I'm gonna go back here. Okay, so that's my suggestion. If you look at the before and after, okay? Play up the light a little bit, bring in some highlights along the arm, smooth those arms out so they don't look so crepey, fix the necklace. I didn't quite finish that, but I did tell the maker about it. Um, and just kind of give it an overall kind of feeling. It's still very much painted, but we've actually added a little more light in there to give it a little more pop, a little more um, contrast, and a little more direction, excuse, a little more directionality of the light. So those would be my suggestions for that one. This little guy, gorgeous, um, really, really cute, but his knee here is kind of getting, it looks like a tornado hit his knee. Um, we have the tie that's covering up part of his chin. It's a painting, so we can change that. We can come in here and just take the color from the chin and, and expand that. Um, 
we've got light coming in from this area at, but no shadow here. So I think we need to take care of that. And the back of his head looks very flat. So I might kind of round that out a bit. Again, use the dodge tool and brighten up the hair. So he's got some shine to his hair. Little kids really have shine to his hair. The other thing I do, we've got these little grommets on the, the leg of the chair. So I would take those and kind of bring just a little bit of a hint of a grommets on the other leg because I think we would see those in that profile. They do pop out a bit. So I'd put those in there. The hand is kind of mushy here. We have the hand in the guide images. I know what the hand looks like. So I could copy that and just paint it a little bit less and that would make a big difference. We've also got the plane of the front of the seat cushion being brighter than the top and it's a bit like that up here but not quite enough to really give you that sense of dimensionality. So my suggestion to this maker is more like this. Notice the chin, brought the chin back, curved the head out a little bit, brought in a shadow behind him, the knee of the pants right here, and in the guide image, his little toes are showing, and I would put those back. Um, he was told by someone else to take the toes out, so obviously it's a matter of opinion, but I really kind of like the idea of seeing those toes, and that tells me the rest of the position of that leg is very consistent. Also notice the color in the book that he's reading. They're very, very bright in the original and are kind of off the the, the um, saturation scale from the rest of the image. So I brought them down to be very, very much in line with the same colors as the background, the same color as the chair. So it all works together in a little bit more harmonious way color-wise. So again, there's the start file and there's my suggestion. Okay, lovely girl. Um, really nice job of painting this one. It's very, very kind of almost um, impressionistic. But a couple of things. I think the hair gets to look like a blob when you don't have a lot of highlights in it, some shine in it somewhere. Her hat's looking a little flat considering how directional the light is. And the flower has no directionality of light in it as well. The other thing about it is her middle looks very thick. So one of the things I'd do is come down here. I'm gonna come all the way down here because I'm not in the regular pen tool, I'm in this one. Select her sleeve so I can keep away from it. And where would we like to put this? Let's see. I'm thinking about there and there. And turn that into a selection and then I can clone in from here right into the waist and bring her waist down and actually add just a bit more shadow to here. I would pop a little bit of a highlight in the hat and in the flower here and in the flower here. And the other thing I noticed was she's her thumb is kind of lost. It's a painting. So it's pretty easy to come in here and take a piece of the color of that. Um, I'm just using the, the clone tool and bring back the thumb. And you don't have to get super fancy about it because of the fact it is rather impressionistic. It gives her thumb back without it kind of getting lost, but we're not being super fussy about it too because it's, it's a painting. Again, this is one area where it's getting really mushy. So that should also be uh, looked at and, and use the clone tool or whatever you can do. And if this were done in Corel Painter, which I think it was, it doesn't mean you can't go back into Photoshop afterwards and make all sorts of corrections quite easily. So this is, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. This is the beginning and this is what I would suggest. So see the area that's up here, pop that so it's got a little bit of shine, a little sheen to it and shows the directionality is continuous through the hat her face, the side of her dress, the flower here, her hand, everything. You want the lighting to be consistent. Um, look at the hair. I popped a few highlights into the hair, just using the dodge tool. 
not really complicated. If you wanna get complicated, change the brush tip to bristle brush and you can start brushing in really, really distinct little hairs of brightness. Uh, notice the waist, brought the waist down, shaped it with a shadow a little bit more and that would be what I would suggest on this one. So nice image, beautiful image, just a few changes that I would suggest. Uh, remember I said it's easy to kind of flatten out an image when you paint it? This has absolutely, let's just check it out, looking at our levels down here. There isn't a black pixel in there until we get up to 62, 63. That means in the tonal range that's made up of 256 shades of gray, this person is not using one quarter of the tonal range. That's just like throwing it away. So that's just not a good thing. So you can bring that over so we do start to get some black pixels in there. That's one way to kind of get that back, but it's really, it is compressing the tonal range into that. Um, you're, you're building tonal range in that way. So that's one thing I would suggest. That's, add, that's taking it and multiplying it and adding it in. So that's the tonal range. Another thing I would look at is maybe bringing color back because making it black and white without any kind of toning in it makes it feel pretty cold for a very small child. So I think the color version of this might work a little bit better. I think that might be just too much color. Just a little bit less. Now you can come in here, it's a separate layer, so you can come in and do anything you want with it. Um, or tone it, make it a warm tone black and white instead of a, a completely cold black and white. The other thing to watch, um, she's got, as, as I darken this up a bit, she starts to get pretty noisy in right in here. In, in the original, you can see, this is the original. You see it's a little bit noisy, a little bit grainy in here. And um, that's starting to look like digital dirt, as Sandra Pierce would say. Um, so be careful of that too. So when I looked at this, I kind of smoothed her skin out when I did the, the other versions of this. So again, using the mixer brush, because she's a very small girl, her skin would be beautifully smooth and soft and creamy. And so I would, I would change that and, and kind of go that direction. But you know, the elements in here, this artist has brought some great elements together for this image. He's got his composition done beautifully. He's put it all together in a really nice way. It's just kind of, when you lose the dimension in it, when you lose the contrast and tonal range, it really kind of, it, it doesn't work. It's false flat. So that would be my suggestion on that one. And this one, it, you would hear, hear me talk about dimension a lot if I were mentoring you, if I were doing any kind of consulting with you about this. Um, and that's what I think we're kind of missing here is a little bit of dimension. So I come in like this thing and then whoop, and again I'm using that um, brush the sorry the pen tool the curvature pen tool again not that hard now much easier than it used to be and just the option or alt key see how it's just a round point now if I click that it becomes an angular point so and then I can just move it over there so now I've got his little beak there I can turn that into a selection, put it off on its own layer. And now I can come in and use bevel. Uh, drop shadow is one I wanna use. And there we go. You've got uh, stuff going on underneath the beak that gives it dimension and separates it from the stuff below. I use bevel and emboss and drop shadowing all the time to add dimension to things. The other thing I would do here, add a layer, go into the mixer brush. You get in the sense I use the mixer brush a lot, I do. So I'd go into the mixer brush, one of those bristle brushes, and here we go. And see how I can really pull out those little hairs right there and make them look even more hairy. I think this was a case of somebody just stopping before they kind of got to the 
the fruit of all their labor. Um, so you can do that. And then you can do the same thing with the, um, the dodge and burn tool. So I'm going to use the same brush tip. It's going to be right up here because it's the last thing I used and come in here and you can add dimension to that fur if that's fur or feathers, whatever it is, by just coming in with the dodge tool. I'm going to flatten all this down so it affects everything. But see how it adds dimension and I'm just doing this really fast. I'll show you the a little bit slower, more careful result in a minute. But you can add dimension that way. Um, these guys are missing a beak, so I would add that as well. Super easy with the pen tool, or you can even kind of freehand it if you want. Um, the last thing I want to talk about in this one is I would select that branch, and I already did, so I'm going to load that as a selection, okay? All right, so, whoop, cancel, close that up go back to this layer, copy it into his own layer. So now I have a layer which just has the branch on it. I'm going to come into that branch and go to layer styles and go to pattern overlay. Pattern overlay, and I'm, I've already got a pattern in here. There's a bunch of patterns that come with it. You can load your own patterns in here very easily. Just take a pattern, select it, go up to edit and define pattern. It's in here to use anytime you want it. So I've already got that loaded in. And I'm going to just do that. It's in soft light blend mode, in case you didn't notice. So it's not actually replacing the pixels underneath. It's just adding to them. It's interacting with it. Now, it's green, and I don't want it to be green. So I'm going to come in here and right-click on the PC or Control-click on the Mac and go to Create Layer. You can also go up to Layer and Layer Style and Create Layer that way. Okay, and that's going to put that pattern off on its own layer. Now I can go into that pattern and I can do hue and saturation on that. I can put it in any color mode I want. I can change the hue, I can change the saturation. And now I have more of a bark-like texture on that. If it's too much, I can just bring the opacity down. I have so much control on this. There you go. So now it really looks more like wood. It really looks more like a branch there. So my suggestion on this one is more like that. So come in there, put the little beaks in, um, play up and have fun with that fur, add the texture into the, um, the branch there, and I think that works better. And I, I had a little boo-boo here, right there that I kind of went over it with the brush, I believe, but if I'd seen that when I did it, I would have undone it right away. But just, you know, it's not supposed to be there. Enjoy the image. Imagine it without that. So, okay. So that would be my suggestion on this one. Okay, next. Minor touch-ups, just little things that make a big difference. Okay, a couple of wedding images here. All right, we've got a beautiful bride here. Um, really, really beautiful dress, gorgeous veil, the whole thing. You know, great subject matter. But there are a couple of problem areas that I see, all right? One is the sleeve. Her shoulder here is really kind of at odds with the rest of her skin tones because there's so much in the veil itself. So I kind of make that cooperate a little bit better. If you look at her nose, her nose is a bit bright for the image, I think. I would kind of tone that down. And then there's a funny little line here that I can't explain. So the first thing I do is come in here with the lasso tool, just make a very loose selection of that. And I would go, Shift Delete to go to my Fill menu, or you can go up to Edit and Fill and Content Aware, and just go to the right layer and try it again, and Fill Content Aware, and fill that little problem area. If you need to do more than once, just do it again. So there's one. So then I would kind of come into her nose and burn that down just a bit, and there we go. Just a bit. Be subtle. 
Okay, again, I'm using the, yeah, way too much. I'm using the dodge tool with just the um, option or alt key down to switch from the, the dodge tool to the burn tool. And then the last piece is I would take that arm and select it and just take a little of the saturation out of it to make it kind of look more like the rest of her skin tone. So it's not pulling my eye to her, um, to her shoulder, to her arm there. So that is the, this is the before, this is the after. There's a little piece of flying hair there too that I kind of burned down. So it didn't pull my eye as well. But really, really beautiful image. And I hope it does well for this maker. On this one, um, this is a case where I think the matting or the presentation actually hurts the image. We've got a pretty black mat here. I think it's, it's actually very black. Um, but the image itself, it has a little bit of black. He's, he's got a little black in his outfit, but the rest of the image, the black, black mat makes it look like it is flat-ish. Um, it really isn't serving this image very well. So one of the things I would suggest is changing the mat color. And let's turn on the, there we go and bringing that down so it doesn't make the the, ins, the regular part of the image look so flat. You could do either like a charcoal gray or like a green color, either one of those would work. If you look again, I actually also added a little bit of extra saturation up here. If we're looking at a black matte, then you don't even really have to make a selection. You can just come in here um, with your saturation, hue and saturation, if you go to the sponge tool, the opposite of desaturate is saturate. So you can come in here and just add a little pop of saturation. I'm going to be at 30% and just bring in just a little bit more. If I open this up, there we go, to the right layer and just bring that in. Because I think that probably was why this maker included that sky, because you've got a really beautiful sky. So there's more of what I would kind of suggest is just be careful that you're not making your image look less beautiful than it is with the matting. The matting should be a frame. It shouldn't be a point of interest. It should be subtle. It should be enhancing the image, but not fighting with it. Okay. And Storytelling, oh yeah, good one. Okay, so this is such a fun image. This maker sent it to me, but it's a very small JPEG. So the reason there's a whole lot of JPEG um, artifact in here. All that haloing right here, that's JPEG artifacting. Um, so, and I'm not gonna, I just showed you how to get rid of the halos, so I'm not gonna do that again but I'm going to address a couple of other issues with this. We've got a small baby in a very black outfit, which is huge contrast. So if I were shooting this, I think the idea is a riot. I think it's really funny and cute, but um, the Tiffany and, and Sons card and the way it's between the fingers is really kind of fun. The color palette is really cool, except for the black. So. I would also crop in because there's a lot of space over here that's just not really all that interesting. Even down here, I'd crop in. So this would be more my suggestion, is changing the color of the outfit if possible so that it matches the Tiffany bags or matches the white, either one. You know, get, put the baby in a white outfit or a, a light, light gray outfit if there is such a thing. Um, the color combination with the Aqua uh, Tiffany's bag and the croissants and the little cat, that's a very good choice. I even colorized the sunglasses here. And again, because this is so low res, it's really hard to do a nice job on the retouching, but that's kind of where I would suggest going. Rather than having all that extra space around the baby, come in on the baby. I also went into liquify and gave the baby a little bit of a smirk because I think that fits better with the story. The baby looks a little happier and more content. And I think that is really the story here is this baby is on top of the world, has 
everything going for her and is delightfully rich and decadent. So great storytelling. And this maker sent me a, a few images and the sets that she is building are dynamite. Fantastic job with the set building. Just think a little bit more about the storytelling and not don't include anything extraneous in your image. If it doesn't add to your image, it probably detracts from it. So when you have all that space over here that just is kind of empty space and not doing anything for this and doesn't really function as breathing space either, um, I would just crop that off. So nice job of storytelling on this one though. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, this is one of mine. And this one went into the state as this. And I got feedback, uh, I went into districts as this, sorry, and state. Um, I got feedback about the arms being too skinny and the connection between the body and I knew there were issues up here. I didn't like particularly the way the, the nails came out, the fingernails came out. So I did, I went back and I reworked it after state. It did okay at state. I think it got an 84, 85 at state. Um, so I wanted to do a little bit more with it. So this is the way it went off to um, IPC. I added a couple more little characters made from the same materials that I made this guy from. Um, if you just take the eyes off, they obviously they're in a, I shouldn't say obviously, but I work in a pile of layers. So never putting uh, the eyes, for instance, right on the layer that they're going on. I want to be able to have that editability. So it was very easy to just take the eyes and the nose and the mouth and make those layers invisible and make these little guys. So this is just, this guy is this guy without all the accoutrements. Um, so he's here and this guy is the same thing, except I put the arm in here, connected the arm. So it looks like it's profile and the little leg here. Um, the rule of odds is it's more visually pleasing to have odd numbers. So I didn't add one, I added two. So I've got two and it adds to the storytelling here. When I look at this one, it's one guy alone. When I look at this one, it, it makes me laugh and it just looks more fun to have these guys in the background kind of going crazy while this guy goes crazy too. So think about your storytelling and think about how it's going to connect on a human level, even if it's an alien. And that is something I think about all the time. Okay, technical excellence, there we go. Okay, um, really, really pretty flower here. Really interesting. I like the little lady ladybug climbing up it. Um, she hadn't done the presentation on this yet, so I'd add, I'll add that in. It's very bright up here, so my suggestion was to darken that down. And when I looked at it on my other computer, my laptop, which is a little bit differently calibrated, I not calibrated, I should actually say, but I do a lot of rough work on that and then come to my bigger computer. You can take that off and turn it, take it off on its own layer, turn it, use that warp tool right here and bend it around so that it conforms to the shape that it would be in on that, on that branch. I'm gonna drop the opacity of this to about 50% so I can actually see where I need to get rid of it and then come in and you can use a layer mask uh, for sake of time. I'm just going to use the, the eraser tool to kind of come in and erase that. And that pops in and gives you the texture there. If I come in and put it back at 100%, um, it gets kind of murky there. So, you know, again, you could come in with the brush tool right here, change it to color blend mode and I don't want that tip, I want a regular just soft edge tip and pick you know, a nice pink color here. I'm going to again, over here, lock the layer so I don't paint on any pixels that aren't on that layer and then drop the opacity down so we can fill in, fill in that little area and just add um, a little bit more 
depth to that that area so that's kind of one thing I'm talking about that right here we've got a real bright spot on that leaf so I would take this leaf right here copy it using again I would use the the pen tool I would but you know if you want to use the quick selection tool you can certainly do that but I would take and make a selection of it this way okay like that and copy and paste that to a new layer and then move it over and you're gonna have to do a little more work to that or you can use the clone tool so that it doesn't look like you've just clone stamped that but come in and just do some some adjusting I actually probably I think when I did the redo I took it from here and added it over here so let's look at that yeah and then this needs to be burnt down just a bit oh sorry I'm in the saturate and desaturate I keep it in the dodge tool all the time so I just forgot I didn't actually go in there there we go so you could come in there and and kind of burn that down a bit um, I'm not going to take the time to do that now but I, you do want to be really careful about not making it look like a duplicate so I also sharpened up the stem just a bit and added the presentation to it so I'm going to go back to the beginning here so you can see the areas that I had concerns about um, everything should be maybe a tiny bit sharper in here if you look really close it does seem to be a little bit soft this was pretty bright and there's a little bit of a dip right there see in the original right there that I would clone out just so it doesn't look like a mistake um, so those are the areas of concern that I had and then that was my suggestion for a redo so again just bringing in here and and changing the depth of that that color there sharpening this up a little bit because so it matches the sharpness of that and then we've got this not going quite black which I didn't see on my other computer but you get in there again remember that suggestion I made in the first one the first part of this use your levels and make sure that things that are supposed to be black are black so that is not even close to black it's showing up so I would go in there and make sure we get those corners burned down or black enough so that you're not going to see all that stuff in the background with those fantastic IPC monitors okay yeah um, even as a heterosexual woman along in years the first place my eye is going right there too it's just really really prominent and kind of distracting and takes away from her really beautiful face her face is also pretty contrasty and we've got some bumps and bumps right there that we should kind of take care of so those are a few areas of concern the other thing is I'm not really buying that that smoke um, I don't know the reason I don't know that it isn't but it just doesn't look quite right to me and it, uh, one of the reasons is it doesn't look like that's lit so a couple of things I would do oh and the elbow is another area of concern coming right at the camera um, posing is an issue with this image as well so um, if you're reshooting this try and not have the elbow come straight to the camera so one of the things to light a cigarette just take your dodge tool and we've got that there and just go in here let me see right there and go over and voila it's lit so okay because it's right there so we want it to be lit um, so I would come in again with that mixer brush and go over her face and then drop the opacity and I'd come in here with the the healing tool the spot healing brush and just dab away some of those little areas where she's got kind of raised um, raised spots on her skin I'd bring this area down a bit and if you look closely here she's got a very rough edge to her chin so I'd use that um, that P 
pen tool, the curvature pen tool to straighten that out unless you get a really steady hand. I also, we also have a kind of an obnoxious shadow here from that finger, so I would play that down. Um, use the clone tool and play that down. And I also, with this elbow, kind of softened that up with the, the, um, the mixer brush as well. So bring the, the breast down a little bit so we're not kind of just glomming right into that area. Soften the elbow up so it doesn't as obnoxiously kind of come right to the camera. If you look at her hand, I took down the shadow there by using the mixer brush again. Just soften that up. Look at the shadow of that finger on her cheek. Soften that as well. Didn't get rid of it because there would be a shadow there, but just softened it up a bit and softened her skin as well. And I added smoke up here from, I have smoke brushes that I made. Um, it's super easy to do, black background, light it from the back, 45 degree angle, two lights I used. You could do it with one probably easily too. And then uh, use an incense that, incense stick to make smoke and take a few pictures, turn them into brushes. And that, you'll have to come to one of my classes for me to show you that or look for a tutorial online. So uh, I have several tutorials on YouTube about that. But that would be my before. Let me go back up here. And then this would be the after. So you're not just right going right into that chest area. Her face is a softer look not so contrasty, the elbows soften down. If you decide it's too much, just come in here, put a layer mask on that, and paint with a black brush at low opacity to bring back enough that you get a little more detail in that elbow. And see, we can bring it back as much or as little as we want. So bring it back that much or that much, however much you want it. So kind of get in there and look at that. So those would be my suggestions for this lovely lady.